Um, if you'd like to grab yourself a crystal, if you haven't already, just anything that you might feel drawn to. Yay, I love it. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, and if you haven't already or if you feel like you need to cleanse it or if you feel like you need to do whatever, just, um, you know, feel free to do that now before we begin. Um, we're going to do a little practice a little bit later. Um, so, yeah, feel free to, um, to do that now. Okay. So, so I am just... Um, as I said, just muting you guys. But if you need to ask a question, just feel free to come off or you can write in the chat as well. All right, so let's get started. So for those of you who don't know me, just a little bit about um, me and my love for crystals. Um, so I, um, I have been working with crystals now um, I guess for a, like, and when I say working, I mean, you know, professionally working with crystals for about now six years. And um, I have, but I have always felt like they're a massive part of my life. Even, you know, when I started, when I was a child, I was always playing with them. And I was really lucky, actually. My mom had crystals like around the house and she actually um, was always drawn to them as well. So I was kind of introduced to them through her. Um, but I always loved them. But when I kind of lost my connection to spirituality, which I know many of us kind of have those moments and so many, I know students and so many of my clients um, can relate to, to that idea of like disconnecting from, from ourself and, and who we are. Um, even when that happened, like throughout my, you know, later teens and 20s, I still had them around me. It was like they were always this, this part of me. Um, you know, I, I traveled overseas and I always had crystals. It was like they were always in my luggage. They were always, you know, part of my relationships. And, yeah, I would always give crystals to people, all that kind of thing. So um, I feel like if for me it's almost as if even if we feel like we've disconnected from these things, they're a beautiful reminder that even if you push them away or physically feel like you're not connected energetically to them and that kind of thing. I just want you always to know that they are there, like they're there and your connection to them is, is really always there. It's just that sometimes we can feel like, you know, we, we are disconnected, but the truth is we're never disconnected from anything really. Right. Because we're always, we're always one. It's just our perception of how we, um, how we feel, you know, and what's going on in our life. And sometimes our, our energy and our attention is pulled away from things. So, um, you know, I, I know that sometimes we can feel like um, there are times where we, where we do feel like our spiritual connection or our spiritual practices might feel like they are put on the shelf a little bit, but I want you to know that um, it's always just there waiting, just waiting for you. Like they're, they're waiting for you to come back to them. Um, so as I mentioned um, a little bit uh, earlier, just when we started, today is the 22nd of the 2nd and 2022. So it is a really beautiful time for us to be learning a little bit about this paradigm shift and what it means. And also um, I'm really excited as well to bring crystals into this conversation because I feel like what is happening at the moment is the idea of this 22nd, why it feels so significant is because it's like this representation of, it's like the line, drawing this line in the, in the sand of where the paradigm shift starts, right? And where it's actually being cemented and where we say enough's enough, right? So it's, it's like that collective shift and that collective energy um, it's almost like this permission slip of here is here and now is the time where you get to decide what goes, like how are we moving forward together as a collective. And we know that if we don't stand up to that, then nothing changes, right? And crystals are a massive part of that because Mother Earth's energy has 
literally shifted as well. Like her energy has shifted. And so it's not just a, it's not just a, a matter of um, like a, you know, a, a divine kind of energetic shift. You know, if you think about something universally or outside of Mother Earth, but it's also Earth's energy that has shifted as well. And of course, many people forget on our spiritual journeys that we're physical, we're part of her, we're very, very much part of Mother Earth. We are one of her gifts, one of her treasures, just like crystals. And crystals are um, a significant, um, a very significant part of her consciousness. And I see them as this enabler, an enabler for us to connect with her and her wisdom, her soul's wisdom, right? And I see the you know, crystals and crystal energy as this way of helping us to connect with that, helping her to heal and helping her to shift and transform just as not just for her, but for all of us, right? All of her and her treasures, like all of her gifts, all living beings as well. So crystals, if we allow them to be, are these beautiful messenger, this beautiful enabler. Um, obviously they're beautiful to look at <laughs> as well as to, to work with as well. So, um, and I don't, I don't think there's a, there, that is any coincidence that they're actually beautiful and they're something that we can admire from a, an aesthetic perspective. Um, even sometimes you'll pick up something that might not be, you know, pretty looking, but you can see it as the most beautiful form you've ever seen has anyone had that experience like you'll pick up a crystal and someone else will be like oh yeah it's it's okay like it doesn't look great but then you're looking at it going this is just what a wonder like <laughs> this is the most beautiful crystal just recently I had this experience so I bought this um smoky quartz point I'm going to show it to you and like aesthetically you know some smoky quartz I do look at them and go wow, that is, that is really magnificent. Um, and, you, and, you know, there are some obviously that are prettier than others, but this one, I just can't put it, I can't, I can't put it down. I just am so drawn to it at the moment. And you look at it and you're probably going, like, when I think about it logically, I'm like, what? Like, it's, not, it's, it's not that, you know, beautiful or pretty and, and that kind of stuff, but I just cannot, I cannot stop holding it. I can't stop working with it and looking at it. And it's it's just incredible. I just look at it and I see like an entire universe inside of it. So um, this, is, this is where I say it is not, that is not a coincidence. Mother Earth is drawing you in to connect you with whatever is needed. Now, why are we, why are we attracted to some crystals at some points, uh, you know, sometimes and why are we not? not so much to others and why you and why not me and and so on the reason is is because our vibration is constantly changing right constantly you know think about just yesterday or even this morning it's only midday right in in melbourne and i have already felt maybe like 20 different emotions today <laughs> Right. And I'm sure you guys have probably think, you know, you could probably sit there and go, yeah, actually I woke up this way, then this happened and then that, and then that, and then whatever. So that is not unusual. We're meant to be like that. We're meant to be flat in a constant state of flux. It is part of our, you know, it is part of the gift of being a human and, and part of our human experience. Of course, we'd always love to be operating at our most optimal level all the time, you know, and, and super high vibe and super high frequency. Um, but the reality is that we're not. And part of our human experience is to experience all of that. It is actually to feel it all, to feel all the 20 emotions that we felt. Now, in that constant state of flux and up and down and up and down and shifting and moving and all the things, we're going to be drawn to different things at certain times to match wherever our frequency is at, right? So a crystal is also in its own frequency, right? It also has its own frequency level its own vibration because it is also we're energetic beings so are crystals right now 
if we're constantly fluctuating and vibrating, we also are going to need different things at different times. Now, our energy might stay at some kind of frequency level for a certain period of time. So I've just said to you, maybe my maybe my relationship with this crystal has been going on for about a week now <laughs> where, we've, where we've been getting really close. Um, but it might be it might be different tomorrow it might even be different next week so just going with that and trusting in that connection that you have with whatever is happening at that particular time trusting that you are resonating your frequency is resonating with the frequency of another crystal at that particular time and it is perfect it is in this resonance that you get into this state of co-creation this is crystal phenomena right this is that energetic phenomena that we talk about and that you experience um you cannot really understand i think that crystal um energy and understand like it's it's phenomenon it's beauty it's um mystic and magic until you really connect to a crystal until you actually um feel that alignment that resonance with it and that is I I think where the you know that that is where the power comes from um and that is their duty that is what they're here to do they're here to connect with us I also really trust and believe that crystals are here not necessarily you know just for us but I think they're also here for um for mother earth in general and for all of its beings. So I don't always believe that every crystal, you know, will have its own with, you know, needs a person to bring it to life or, or to connect with or, or anything like that um, and need someone else to co-create magic with. But I do believe that, it that you know, for us personally, it is part of our, um, it, is, it is part of our, I guess, um, uh, purpose here especially if we're drawn to working with crystals and to use crystals, you know, whether or not you're a practitioner working with others or even just for yourself, I feel like it is part of our purpose to help Mother Earth evolve the universe, right, to its highest expression and to our highest expression and working with the crystals in order to co-create that and to help that evolution. We know now that um, crystals have evolved and changed over time as well. So that is a really important part of crystal therapy and to understanding how, how the crystals work and their, I guess, the importance that they play in this human evolution, Mother Earth's evolution. Um, in terms of, uh, obviously, they take millions, if not billions of years to form. I'm sure you're all aware of that. Um, but the types of crystals that are being found and formed now are, are changing. And, and people know this. People know that. There's new crystals coming, coming out. I'm sure you guys have, you know, seen and you, you probably on your Instagram feeds or, you know, at the shops and things are like, oh, no, I've never heard of this crystal before. Is this new? And, and yes, they are. They're, they're new. There's new crystals like popping up. Um, they're now, I think, even though they've been kind of in the, you know, in the making or taking millions of years to form, now Mother Earth is saying it, they're ready to be worked with. Like now is the time to work with them. And so it's just trusting and, and honouring that we are kind of just like we have evolved, you know, our levels of consciousness are evolving, so too are the levels of consciousness um, of the crystals as well. So um, even crystals that are, like have been around for a long time are even changing that the way that they look as well and their um the the way that they're formed the way that they the, you know the, the actual um aesthetic is changing too so um again just really just really trusting in that wisdom and that that um that universal wisdom and mother earth's wisdom there um so this idea of higher consciousness and what does it even mean and new earth consciousness and, and you know, all the stuff that we've been talking about, basically, um, I believe that when we, you know, when what higher consciousness actually is and this evolution to higher consciousness is actually where human and the divine meet. 
that that's that's exactly where it, what it is. That's what I believe. I believe it's this space where we are our true potential, right? Our truest expression. It is where Mother Earth is in her truest expression. And I know and I believe that, you know, there have been ancient civilizations where that existed, right? And where where that that was how people lived, you know, a, a type type of people. Um, certainly not what we look and seem like today, but definitely it has existed in the past. Um, and now it's time for us to continue to evolve and to, to shift back into that higher level of consciousness. So I'm sure you are, you know, people refer to these things as, as you know, different give them different tags or trends and and labels and and things like that but certainly people's level of awareness is expanding right and i think we we can all agree with that like a lot of things that maybe um were normal or accepted and and you know things like that that have been happening in the past or things that have just been occurring without the awareness of them like stuff like that is really being unveiled right it's coming to light And in that same expression, in that same, you know, movement, so too um, does that trend need to continue for ourselves. So stuff that is no longer serving us as individuals, as sovereign beings, that also needs to come to light, right? And that can be really hard. It can be really difficult playing around with, um, shadow aspects of who we are, recognizing that we are, you know, um, that, that there, there are parts of us that patterns, old patterns that are hindering us, people in our lives that stop us from moving forward, um, not just patterns, not just behavioral patterns and things like that, but also it can be people in our life too. Um, all of this stuff is, is really important for us to have awareness of it because when we have the awareness we do actually get to change it we can't change anything without the awareness and that's why you're seeing the trends of um you know that happening in in i guess the the outside world but also in our inner world as well um is that landing for everyone do you guys feel like there's a yeah yeah so it's it's almost like this is there is this real push for all this unraveling, all this unveiling for stuff to move out of the way. Um, This idea is that if we get to that place where human and divinity exists, coexist together, um, that is like this this idea of of where um, there is full harmony. It's unity, right? It's oneness. It's it's purity. And that's where we're kind of, you know, what we're all trying to to get to. Um, Not to say that it's only to, that we should only experience joy and happiness and all of that, those higher frequencies when we arrive there, because of coming back to my earlier point, it is part of our human experience to actually go through this, to journey through there. So um, I know that can be really difficult, but it's very important that you remember to have fun and to admire the beauty and, and all of that stuff as, as part of our part of our journey to getting there. Um, and we may not get there in this lifetime, you know, probably won't, but it's so beautiful to know that, you know, um, the younger generations will ex- hopefully experience something that is um, a little more closer to oneness than perhaps what we have experienced. Um, And how beautiful to think that we would be living in some sort of future where Mother Earth is absolutely in coherence with humanity. It's amazing, right? Where that true, you know, our our true state of living as as humans in human form is that Mother Earth and, you know, pure consciousness is like there's no difference like it really would be like heaven on earth like that would be that's kind of the idea that we that we're trying to return to um so you can see now that crystals play this really important role for us so it is so important that we acknowledge so I'm going to assume that all of you are here today and and for those of you watching the replay as well that you are feeling that call to really understand and connect to your crystals a little bit deeper or connect to them on a, on a different kind of level, 
because you've probably been feeling this this shift. You've probably been feeling like, um, I don't know, maybe they're speaking to you a little bit more or maybe you're feeling like you need to work with them a little bit more. Um, I know that started happening to me a few years ago and just last year I felt this huge pull of um, teaching more about crystals and I felt this, it was just such a clear message for me to connect to my my inner crystalline energy and to understand like my, you know, my connection to working with crystals and ancient practices and, and things like that. And I really felt called to, to step up into that and to also share a lot of that ancient knowledge and, and wisdom. And a lot of it isn't in books, right? A lot of it's not something that you can read about, but it is something that you can learn to connect to through your own self and your own wisdom. Um, and just, being open to that, being aware of that and, and trusting trusting in that as well is really, really important. Um, so I want to take you through a little practice. Um, and as I said, it really is, it, I think it's really important for us to honour that we, if you are feeling like this is part of your purpose, to connect deeper with crystals and to work with crystals and to help Mother Earth, to help the collective shift and, and raising of consciousness. Um, and also for transforming ourselves as part of that collective. Um, I think that, you know, it is really important as well that we also consider how important crystals are for us to take care of them, right? And I know that sometimes that slips, so that's why I'm putting it out there today because I know even people who work with crystals a lot can, can, you know, fall into traps or fall into bad habits of not looking after their crystals, not giving them the attention that they require and, and things like that. So I am just putting that in there as a little reminder. Um, it really is important for you to take care of them, to treat them as if they are living beings. So listening to them, um, connecting with them all, all the time. Um, it, so with, with saying that, now I'm going to take you through a little practice just to connect with your crystal because I've talked a lot about how important it is for us to really connect with a crystal um, and getting to that place where, you know, we are one. It is us and the crystal together um, and in that place of, of resonance. So I'm now going to take you through a little practice. So I'm going to get you guys to grab your crystal you have it so whatever you like whatever kind of crystal you like um I really believe that all crystals are a way for us to expand our consciousness so there are some that you know typically will be um like oh, these ones are for higher consciousness, for reaching higher states and, and things like that. But I truly believe that, as I said, when we talk about higher consciousness, it is much more than just elevating our spiritual awareness. It is really about coming into that place of unity and wholeness. And I believe all crystals assist us in, in doing that. Um, so I don't mind what crystal you are feeling drawn to. Um, I would love to know if you'd like to share, if you want to pop it in the chat, just to what kind of crystal you're using. I would love to, I would love to know just because I, um, um, just because I, I, you know, I want to know just because they're so beautiful and I, I'd love to know what you guys are feeling drawn to using right now. Um, Ruby light, oh my God, so beautiful. Rose quartz. Yes. Why am I not surprised, Helen? <laughs> A puff of light in Zela. Oh my goodness, so beautiful. So, so beautiful. And her command, yes. Is that the one I sent you, Jacinta? So beautiful. Oh my God. Amethyst. Oh, Aquamarina Labrador. Oh, such different energies, but I love it. That is so beautiful, Amanda. I'm not sure. Oh, Ashley. Oh, what have you got there? I'm just going to, I'm going to have a look. Oh, that's a citrine. That is so beautiful. It's a natural citrine. So, um, you know, often we can uh, obviously get heat-treated citrine or there's natural citrine and heat-treated citrine is that bright yellow like that. 
that one there. So yours is a more like a smoky kind of citrine and it's got, yeah. So there's it's actually all different kinds of all different kinds of citrine, but very beautiful. Um, so one thing just to remember is if you don't know the name of a crystal, it doesn't actually matter. It's fine. I'm sure like there are crystals in your collection that you've got no idea and you can't remember what they are, right? Um, and it doesn't matter how good you are with crystals and how much, how long you've been working with them. I'm sure there is one in your collection, no matter how many you have. Um, there are over 5,000 minerals. Like there are lots. So I don't expect everyone to always remember everything that they have. But the reason why I'm going to say it doesn't actually matter is because the only thing that matters is your connection with that crystal. And sometimes when we know what it is, we can actually get really caught up in the label of it. And what happens is we start to attach to the metaphysical properties and what, you know, Judy Hall wrote in her book or what, what's, you know, what was on the website and, and the meanings or what the person at the shop told you that it was good for. And when that happens, it, it limits us. Like you think about labels and how they limit you, right? Um, a great example is for the little girl who was told that she was shy her whole life, right? Stuff like that, you know. Oh, this is Loretta and she's really, yeah, she's just really shy. Like being told that she's shy. You know, that kind of idea, it, what it does is limits us and we grow up believing that that we're shy, that we're limited. Um, it's a beautiful example. And, you know, so many people can, can always um, relate to that one. And there's, you think about the same with citrine as a beautiful example. Oh, citrine, yeah, it's really good for good luck or for money or for confidence or whatever. What happens then is that it, it becomes your go-to crystal just for those list of things, right, that you're, um, perhaps you were told once that it was good for. Um, what happens then is if you're experiencing something completely different, let's say you're going through a really emotional time, you don't need any of those things, and but you're feeling really drawn to the citrine, but you in your head what happens is you talk yourself out of needing it, right, because your intuition is saying, yeah, take the citrine, but logically you're like, oh, no, but, you know, I should go for something that's going to be emotionally healing or emotionally supportive right now and citrine's not going to do that for me. Um, you can see like we can get, we can kind of bring the ego into it and that, you know, real human, we can bring the real human into it. But it's so important for us just to remember that crystals are not limited. They are not limited. It is us who label them. And it is us who label their properties. You know, crystals get their meanings and their properties. They're channeled. They're channeled. That's what they are. It's a channeled message. And people over time have channeled them. And then they've said, this is what, this is what I have received the message that this is what this crystal is good for. So who's to say that you can't channel your own meaning for it? or you can't channel your own message, or you can't trust and believe that you need that for something completely different. So really always stay open to, to that. And, and, you know, um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually glad that you didn't know the, the name of it to have to just to share that, to just share that little bit of insight with everybody. Um, so yeah, always trust in your own your own meaning and your own connection with your crystal. I also always trust that different crystals um, you know, no matter if you have four citrines, probably all four, four of them have kind of different personalities for you, right? Does anyone have that experience? Maybe you've got a few of the same kind of crystal at home. Yeah. Or in your collection. Absolutely. Right. And you'll notice even when working with clients, right? I can, um, Maria can see you nodding there. Even when you're working with clients or yourself, you probably feel more drawn to using certain ones for certain things and it might be the same kind of crystal. So just always trust in that. You are so, you have so much knowledge within you and you are so connected, much more connected than you believe that you are and know that you really are um, beyond your imagination about how connected you are to crystals um, and, their, and their wisdom and Mother Earth's wisdom as well. Okay, 
So in saying that, that's going to help, really help set the scene for this practice that we're about to do. So of course I'm using my smoky cords. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you guys use whatever else you are feeling drawn to use right now. And I am going to get you to start with, I just want you to hold your crystal in your hand. And I'm actually going to get you just to soften your gaze and, and have a really good look at your crystal, okay? So just taking a couple of deep breaths in and out. If you feel like you need to, maybe just to really bring your awareness and your presence with you and the crystal, okay? So just knowing that just for this moment, so we're not going to be too long. Life can wait for a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to get you just now to really take a good look at your crystal. Just noticing its form, noticing the colour. Noticing exactly what it looks like. Are there any inclusions, any ridges that you can, you know, what does it actually feel like? Is it rough or smooth? really just want you to take note of what it looks like, observing it and feeling it, feeling what it feels like in your hand. No doubt you are noticing something for the first time. Okay, noticing this beautiful gift of Mother Earth. Even if it's not a raw crystal, it still has so much beauty. Some people think that, you know, that if they're raw, they have hold more natural resonance or more wisdom, but it's just simply not true. So you, you just go with whatever feels good for you. Okay. So once you've done that, now just finding a position to hold your crystal in that feels really comfy for you in either hand, okay. There is um, a myth, I guess it's a myth, but really it's it's just what feels true to you again. Um, and I, you know, I'm, I really feel like whatever is your truth is the right truth. But um, some people feel that crystals should be held in their power hand. So whichever hand you write with or, you know, you, you do things with your most dominant hand. Others will tell you that it should go in the left hand because it's the receiving side. Um, I don't I don't mind. I, I'm going to I'm just giving you the opportunity now to just feel into what you think your crystal needs. What does, it, what does it feel more comfortable in which, in which hand or is it both hands? Okay, and once that feels good for you, I want you to hold it now up to your heart centre. And we're actually going to close down our eyes. Only if that feels safe for you, of course. If you feel like you want to leave them open, I don't, I don't mind at all. Now I just want you again just to take a couple of breaths in and out, just connecting to your breath. Now I want you to, on your next inhale, if you can bring your awareness to your heart center, as you breathe in, I want you to imagine almost like you are breathing in the energy of your crystal at your heart center. So that's going to feel really different for each of you, right? For some of you, it's going to feel like a sensation. For some of you, you might see a colour. Might even feel like it's melting into your skin or into your heart centre. It might make you smile, might make you feel something else. Like what, whatever it feels like is, is just perfect. You might even feel the energy 
as a as an emotion. Okay. And as you inhale, I want you to imagine as you breathe in with each breath in, imagine that energy connecting with you and expanding through your heart center. So we're going to expand it. So I want you to almost feel like the connection to the crystal is expanding out through your whole chest. Perhaps you can feel, you might feel like it is almost embracing you or cocooning you with its energy. You can feel it throughout your entire being now. Notice how that feels. Notice what you sense, see, know. Just noticing how you know you're connected with the crystal's energy. Feeling it out through your hands, right down through your legs. And I want you to notice it down through your legs and out your feet, beyond your feet. I want you to feel now the energy of your crystal connecting beyond your feet, down, 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 through the floor. The energy moving right down through the earth. Seeing it. Passing all the dirt, all the soil, down through the earth's crust, down through all the roots of the trees, down to the center of the earth, to the soul, the soul of Mother Earth. And here, just being here, feeling one and connected to the beautiful energy of her. And from this space, you might feel called to ask her what she needs. why she has chosen you, why this crystal. We so often are taught and told to ask the crystal for help. And how often do we ask how we can help her? Because we are one, right? And very often the way that we need to help and to be of service is also exactly what we need. she's saying to you that she needs you to step up perhaps she's asking you to take care of yourself to trust to believe to let go to surrender to know your power to follow your heart, to ask for help. To connect with her more. To connect with yourself more.
Just allowing yourself to truly just be bathed in this energy of Mother Earth and the crystal's energy and all its wisdom. Knowing that just as you have chosen your crystal, your crystal has chosen you. Because of this resonance, because of this phenomena, It needs you as much as you need it. Remember that you are a co-creator, that you co-exist. And you are a gift. Now just letting go slowly of this energy from Mother Earth and bringing it back, just coming back into up, up again through the Earth's crust, up through feeling the energy come back into your feet now and up your legs back up through your body and to your heart center. And just taking a moment of gratitude for this practice, for this opportunity to connect at this level. And take a moment also just to integrate and process any messages or insights that came up for you right now. If you feel like you need to write anything down, you can take a moment to do so. And I would love to know if anyone was surprised in terms of the message insights, anything that they kind of connected with there from Mother Earth and the crystal that you chose. Was there any kind of, you know, um, similarities behind what, you know, what I guess you thought, think the properties are or what you think the, um, you know, you might have been drawn to it for? Was there any um synchronicities there I would love to know if you guys want to share was anyone surprised by any of the messages Did anyone feel like it was difficult to connect? Did anyone feel like um, they were, you know, like felt some kind of resistance to their crystal or resistance to connecting with Mother Earth? Sometimes that comes up as well. I just sent uh, her come a diamond and, oh, you were told to level up. Oh, I love that. That's so beautiful. Definitely a synchronicity there, right, between um, the message and, and the crystal. That's so beautiful. I'm sure many of us can, can relate to that message too. So beautiful. Um, I hope you guys liked that practice. Did everyone enjoy it? You guys enjoyed that? Yes. Good, good. Thank you. My crystal presented herself 
as teal chips and requested to be shared and given out. The crystal is one that I'm always drawn to. And I'm, oh my gosh, Joe, I just got full shivers. That is so beautiful. Oh my goodness, that that is really special. So your crystal wants to be of service more, right? Like that is that is really special. Thank you so much for sharing that. Oh, I love it. See, you would never have known that if you didn't connect. It's just, this blows my mind every single time. <laughs> it is really special. Um, I was filled with a rainbow connected me to Mother Earth. Oh, she told me I'm ready to transform. She told me crystals have been part of my ancestors. <gasps> Oh my goodness. Isn't that incredible just validation? Like you sometimes we need to hear that, right? Like, yes, this is you're on the right path. This is exactly what you're meant to be doing. And you know, that is her way of also saying to you, I've got you, I've got you. Like it's okay for you to do this because I'm here with you. I'm 100 percent supporting you on this path. Oh my God. Um, I felt warmth all through my body. What a beautiful practice. Yay. Amazing feelings of ecstasy and love. Ah, me too. I just, I love that so much. <laughs> I could stay in there all day, right? Like, yeah. Um, I always have to keep my eyes open when I'm doing that practice. I, I want to drift off and do it with you guys. I'm like, hang on the ready. You're, you're actually like facilitating. You have to stay grounded because <laughs> it, I love it so much. Um, what else have we got? Lead a charge, go forth and be a light leader. Oh, to show the way forward and spread the message. Gosh, that is so powerful. Oh my God, your messages are so powerful. This is so beautiful. I felt like I was in a warm bath filled with love and enveloping warmth. Ah, oh, I love that, that picture. Oh my goodness. So beautiful. There's nothing better than a warm bath, is there? <laughs> Especially if it's filled with love. I love it so much. Oh, wow. Thank you so much for sharing. It's so nice just to um, just to really, um, I guess what it does to, for me is also validates the way that I was feeling, like picking up what I was picking up on from you guys too. And, and that is really, that is really special and really beautiful. I feel very honored that I get to share all of that with you. Um, oh, and thank you so much. I feel the same. It was an incredible experience for me too. And thank you for joining me on um, for that experience today as well. Um, as I mentioned, it is just such a beautiful day. Um, I, I hope that you guys will feel um, inspired after that. I hope you feel like you can go out and, and share some of that wisdom in whichever way that you need to after that practice. Um, I am going to send you the recording if you, if you know, feel free to go through and, and do it again or, you know, um, if you feel like you could guide yourself you know, go for it. And um, I hope that you're able now just to connect with crystals at that deeper level and, and on another level and try it with other crystals too. Try it and see what messages you get. And I'm sure you'll, um, you'll get different messages as well. Um, and, and in different, at different times too. And sometimes even with crystals that we don't feel maybe we feel a bit repelled by sometimes, some days, um, rather than just focusing on the ones that we always feel drawn to, too. Sometimes the messages are really different as well. Um, I'm going to send out an email to all of you now. And um, there's also some information about some of my um, other ways to work with me. If you feel called to learn more about crystals, um, I have such a variety of um, different courses from online courses and ebooks and things like that right through to my crystal practitioner course. So um, if you are feeling called to, to learn a little bit more or work with me, um, feel free to get in touch. Just a quick question. How do you keep in touch with all your crystals? Yes, it's a great question. I feel like I neglect many. I think that they probably feel neglected too. <laughs> But they probably understand as well. I think just having a bit of compassion, like sometimes we can't all, you know, give them all attention, right, at, at the same time. Um, but it is really important that 
um, maybe you set aside frequent time to maybe go through, cleanse your crystals, to reconnect with them every now and then. Um, I know some people like to do um, as a ritual, not necessarily to, um, um, you know, cleanse them in the full moon, but sometimes just doing something like that helps you to reconnect with them because you're actually playing around with them. I find going going around and changing my shelves around, you know, like moving them around. And Joe just um, gave a beautiful, another really beautiful um, example of something in, in terms of using them for a crystal grid. Um, just, yeah, just allowing yourself to play with them, doing some crystal artwork. Um, yeah, there's lots of different things you can do to stay connected to them. But um, it's definitely important that you, that, um, that they feel loved, <laughs> just like how we want to feel. Um, I sweep my selenite wand over them. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. And again, just doing it slowly and doing it in a way where you where you actually want to, um, you know, connect with 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 them all rather than doing it unintentionally. It's very important that we always have intention when we are doing any of those sorts of practices as well. It's really really important. Okay. Amazing. All right. Um, thank you so much for joining me and I hope to see you all very soon. Bye. <laughs>